Good afternoon. We ask that you take your seats at this time and help us to set a prayerful atmosphere as we will begin in a few moments. Welcome. Today we are filled with joy to celebrate the Sacrament of Eucharist with our First Communion families. These wonderful children are welcomed at the table of the Lord as our par parish family prays together. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. Presiding at this Mass is Father Mark Rezel, assisted by Deacon Boyson. Our opening song is found at number 563 in the Gather Hymnal. Sing with all the saints in glory, number 563. Please rise and join in singing.
As our celebration of Easter continues, we joyfully welcome our first communicants to the Eucharistic banquet. Together we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be with you always. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the source of life for all who put their trust in you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Father's eternal gift of love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you died and rose from the dead to bring life to your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. 
Now this is how we shall know that we, we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this. We should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I have spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as, branch, as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own, unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. This Gospel, wipe away our sins. During this Easter season, as we liturgically move toward the Ascension and Pentecost, we are again reminded that we, the church, encounter the risen Christ in the sacraments. It was in the waters of baptism that we were initiated into the mystery of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus and were first grafted as a branch on the vine. In penance and through the anointing of the sick, 
we hear Jesus speak the Easter refrain, peace be with you. We witness the working of the Holy Spirit in the sacramental pruning that comes with confirmation. It is the third person of the Blessed Trinity who unites vine to branches. It is the Holy Spirit enabling us to live the Easter promise of resurrection. In the sacrament of marriage, we glimpse something of the divine attributes of faithfulness and love. Later this month, our Archbishop will ordain deacons and priests for this local church. The ministry of the ordained enables us to recognize Jesus as risen from the dead. And tonight, we continue to welcome young parishioners to the Eucharistic banquet. And today's gospel passage was taken from that first, first communion. At the Last Supper, when Jesus says, I am the true vine, he's telling the community that though he will soon be leaving, he will continue to be with them. Still more, as the true vine, he will nourish them and sustain them. Sustaining and nourishing are examples of God's faithfulness. The Holy Spirit is the abiding presence of God, the divine pledge given liturgically at the culmination of the Easter season at Pentecost. The Eucharist helps us to be in communion with God and with one another in the church, feeding us so that we might truly become what we eat, the body of Christ. And this is why we are here assembled in prayer around the altars of God's word and sacrament. Whether the imagery be that of last Sunday's pastoral picture of the Good Shepherd or that of tonight's agrarian picture of the vine, the gospel assures us that the risen Christ cares for and provides the necessary means of grace for his church. And for this good news, this gathering of the church gives thanks. And I would invite our first communicants to join me at the altar so that we might make a profession of faith as they renew their baptismal promises. look great. I'm proud of you. Your parents, grandparents, godparents, even your brothers and sisters are proud of you and what you've come here to do today. Now, show me that you know the hands. Okay, when I say the body of Christ, you will say good answer. Now, it's not a test, but we're going to renew baptismal promises. So let me give you the answer ahead of time so you won't be scared, okay? I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Okay, six times, and then I will throw in an amen at the end, okay? Right before you receive communion, though, you'll be reminded that blessed are those who come to the table, who come to the banquet, who come to the Eucharistic feast. Blessed are you. Know that sense of being holy, of being blessed today and every time when you receive Holy Communion. So my young friends, I ask, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Good answer. And do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? And do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? And do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water in the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Now, if you are reading a petition, go that way. If you're helping with gifts, Go to the back, otherwise return to the pew of your family.
invite the church to stand for the universal prayer. Jesus says, if you remain in me, ask what you want, and it will be done for you. Our response is, risen Savior, hear our prayer. For St. John of the Cross, as we welcome those who receive First Communion today to the banquet of the Lord, we pray. Risen, risen Savior, Savior, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the church may bear fruit when we speak out boldly in the name of Jesus, we pray. Risen, risen Savior, Savior, hear our prayer. That those in public office may work together like interconnected connected branches on the vine for the common good, we pray. Risen, risen Savior, Savior, hear our prayer. That those who suffer in hunger and poverty, especially children and babies, may receive the assistance and comfort that they need, we pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. That like branches on the vine, we may work together as a community of faith to bear fruit for the benefit of all, we pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. That the sick, including Felicity Buddig and those listed in our bulletin, will know the healing power of the risen Christ, we pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. That those who have died, including Clarice Poliatka, mother of Julie, Jeannie, Jennifer, and Jason, Genevieve Podolak, wife of Paul, mother of Marguerite Crucial, and John Paul Podolak, Daniel Thomas, brother of Stephen, Maria Nikolic, mother of Danica Ware, grandmother of Chandler and Elise, will behold the face of Christ, who is the true vine, we pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. That those we remember at this Mass may rest in God's loving arms, especially Rita Riley, Frank D. Pompeo, and for those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray, risen, risen Savior, Savior, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God, who gave us Christ the true vine, hear our prayers and let us bear fruit through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing number 696. We bring our gifts, number 696.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But at this time, above all, to allow you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that in the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John of the Cross and with all of the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all of the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command. Formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word in my soul. May the Bible, the blood of Christ, keep us safe for eternal life. Please join in singing number 872, I Will Be the Vine, number 872.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. 
And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thank Thanks be to God. Please join in singing number 668. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. Number 668. 